Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Anika here and I'm back again with another video. In today's episode of Content Alchemy, I'll be showing you guys how I streamline my process. Let's get right into the video. Adobe Premiere Pro has been giving me a little bit of issues, so we're going to use the Premiere Pro beta. So the first things first is setting up project details. The first thing you want to do is you want to open a new project. You can do this by going to File, going to New, and then Projects. Now you want to name your project. What I like to do is I like to name my project the theme of the overall videos I'm going to create within that project. So let's say, for example, Content Alchemy. I'm going to name this project Content Alchemy and it's just going to be easier for me to be creating videos within this project. So I don't create, for each video, I have one project, one main project. I don't create a project for each video, if that makes sense. So I, the project title will always be the, the overall theme of the videos that I'm going to be creating within that project. Now you can select all your clips that you want to import into this project, but I usually like to do this after. Before doing that, I would always recommend naming your sequence. So let's say your project title is Makeup Tutorials and the video that you want to import into your sequence are makeup tutorials let's say for example you're going to name the sequence the name of the the video that you want to create so what i be makeup tutorial number one makeup tutorial number two whatever it may be and then you can select all your clips that you want to import into the into the project but you don't have to do it now you can do it after you can go into the project without any imported videos and that's step four is you go to the sequence settings you to do this once you're in the project go to sequence settings is the first option on top when you click on sequence on top and you want to verify that your resolution is correct but don't be too scared because when you drag a video into the timeline it automatically adjusts to the video resolution the settings the it's still always good to make sure that the sequence settings are good depending on what i'm recording with i usually record at 4k at 30 frames per second so i like to leave my my time base at 30 frames per second and then for the video section i go to frame size and make sure that it's the correct size if it's not I just adjust it and the rest i just leave it how it is and for the check boxes i select maximum bit depth maximum render quality that is what i do and that's all you do for the sequence settings yeah for short form content the ratio is usually 9 by 16 for long form content is usually 16 by 9 so the opposite while the the ratio doesn't change the resolution changes so 1080p height by 1920 width that changes but the ratio itself 16 by 9 doesn't change so let's say for me i recorded in 4k that is usually a resolution of 3840 horizontal by 2160 vertical but the ratio is still going to always be 16 by 9 so that is just just a little little info for that so this is for iphone settings or phone settings smartphone settings i really don't know how the process for camera because i don't have a camera but this is what i do for my iphone 14 pro max it's usually the same thing on all iphones like i was saying the sequence automatically identifies all of this for you but it's always good to double check to see if that's if it's accurate you know what i mean so yeah so once this is done we can now start the color grading process i'll drop another video for you guys all about my color grading process how i call it color grade my videos how i created the presets to color grade my videos easily to make it more easy which is part of my streamlined process so once you're done color grading your video you want to head over to the captions and graphics window which is identified by this symbol on top where you can switch windows so you want to go to the transcript tab and you want to select the the filter symbol click the filter click filler in the filter option and you can adjust the seconds if you want to detect more filler words and then all you have to do is hit delete and then delete all you can do it section by section just by clicking delete 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 but I usually just click delete all and then do my adjustments after. Once you've done that, you want to go back to the same filter settings and then you want to select pauses. So the pauses is what makes your video longer because we pause a lot when we talk just so that we can process our thoughts better. And now you want to repeat the same steps. Just hit delete all and you will see, pay attention to the, the timestamp on your video. 
it will literally go down so much and all you would have to do is really just fine tune the video if you need to add more pauses back or you know add some cross fade so that the sound could flow better and things like that then you do that and now you can generate your captions i always like to make sure that the pauses are removed the filler words are removed and you know all that stuff and then now i generate my captions based off of the transcript make sure to edit your transcript i go through my whole transcript and i make the adjustments that i need i'm not too really like picky about the punctuation really it's just mainly the words and make sure that the words are correct sometimes i i miss a word or two but usually i like to make sure that the words are correct i don't really dwell on the punctuation that much because honestly it takes a lot of time and i really don't have the time to sit through every single transcript and and make it perfect so that is what i do what i like to do too to avoid misspellings is articulate my words better because i have an accent you know must in the end and whatnot so we have like thick accents it's kind of hard sometimes to understand certain words that we're saying so i try my best to articulate my words so that the the video can pick up my words properly so that the transcript can transcribe my words properly you know what i mean so that's what i like to do you can also add a style for your captions you can go to the caption select the whole caption drag your cursor over the whole set of captions you're gonna see it in the timeline and you want to go to the right panel and you're gonna see essential graphics it's going to show you the options to, to edit your text and all you have to do is edit your text however you want it so once you drag over it you can reposition it by moving the the align and transform position so set horizontal position you could set that horizontal position to whatever you want and the vertical position as well you can also scale the text you can scale it to big or small you can also scale the, the font size but what I like to do is I like to create a style. I already have a style set for my captions. I like to create a style. And once once I've done the editing and whatnot, I go into track style and I click on the plus symbol and then and I click create style. That creates the style for my project and then you just rename it and you hit save. And now you have a style for your whole project, right? So whenever you are editing your videos within this project, you're gonna find the track style. So it's easy for you to have a set caption style just for your caption let's say you want to create a new project right and you don't see the track style to apply to your captions you just simply click this symbol right here open style browser when you hover over it is four squares and it says open style browser you're gonna see all the styles that you created for your captions or for your text or whatever it may be that's really all i do and it just makes it easier so you have a set style library that you can just go go in and also if you have different styles let's say you find a style somewhere else you can import a style just by clicking on this plus and click import style right now we're gonna move on to exporting this video that you created you're just gonna head over to the export tab so at the top of the video you're gonna see the home tab the import tab the edit tab and the export tab you're gonna click export and you're gonna rename the video if you want to and then you're gonna choose the location to where you want to save I usually leave it to the the native file which is premiere pro 24.0 and i just leave it there and then i copy and paste it to my portable ssd in my content creation folder the preset leave it at match source adaptive high bitrate and the format h264 is fine leave it as as that honestly you don't really have to change much of the settings but if you don't have these settings put it to those settings now we're gonna go to video and click the three dots and more you're gonna go to render at maximum depth and you want to check the use maximum render quality box as well and then you can just leave the rest how it is and then export that it's going to be a huge file especially if you record in 4k at 30 frames per second on your phone but the quality will be good so that is all that is all i do for my streaming process when it comes to editing the video i'm gonna drop a video for you guys all about how i created my presets how i color grade and all that stuff in the next episode of content alchemy so stay tuned for that i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please subscribe to my channel for more content like this and comment in the comment section down below if you found this video useful i'll see you guys in the next one